Coming up on Citrus TV News, an SU basketball player arrested. The walk-on is in police custody on sexual assault charges. We'll have full updates on the case. And two days until Paul McCartney rocks the Carrier Dome, Hughes is getting ready for the concert of the year. Citrus TV reporter Gabrielle Caracciolo checked in with the Dome to see how they're preparing for the huge crowd. And a special hurricane update as our own Jack Watson speaks with a climate expert about the, the major hurricanes rocking the south. Find out why we are seeing so much damage, all that and more, right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Facebook just announced a deal to release Russian advertisement to the FBI. I'm Connor White, filling in for Noah Wolf. And I'm Claudia Bellafato. Congress made the deal with Facebook this afternoon to release the influential advertisements Russia allegedly used to swing the 2016 campaign. We'll have more on this story as it becomes available. We have breaking news. Health Services says that two cases of mumps have been confirmed on campus. They say it is crucial for all students to have up-to-date vaccinations. Onondaga County Health Department has been notified and students are asked to stay on top of their hygiene. Syracuse police arrested and charged an SU basketball walk-on with sexual abuse in the first degree. An 18-year-old girl called officers to Stadium Place last week, saying a male made sexual contact with her without her consent. Officers arrested Dominic Parker that same night. Parker is currently at the Onondaga County Justice Center. And money, something all college students treasure. Well, one foundation is giving SU students a chance to win $30,000 in cash. The Blackstone Launchpad at SU is offering a campus competition through October 6. Contestants will use Blackstone's new free software platform called Ideator to build their projects. The top three winners will receive cash prizes. A nursing home is in Syracuse is facing another wrongful death lawsuit. Relatives of a patient are suing James Square Health and Rehabilitation Center. They say the center failed to diagnose the patient's sepsis. Sepsis is a life-threatening infection that can impair and shut down organs. The nursing home allegedly caused the patients to dehydrate and lose 40 pounds. This is the fifth wrongful death lawsuit this nursing home has faced in the past five years. Citrus TV reporter Gabrielle Caracciolo is live at the Dome where preparations for Saturday's Paul McCartney concert are underway. Thanks guys. Yes, we are just two days away from the concert, but preparations have been long and complicated. Now I found out how um, security, parking and this warm September heat have impacted that process. One weekend, the Carrier Dome is home to the Syracuse University football team. And the next, it's a sold-out concert arena for one of the world's biggest stars. Chief Facilities Officer Pete Salas says planning the concert has been months in the making. We're so excited. You have no idea. You work here as many years as I have. This show's come and gone. We've tried to book the show many times. I know I have. And to finally to get this show, this is the show. Salah says because of the expected heat, there will be extra water throughout the building and designated cooling off stations. He also says concert goers should plan on arriving with plenty of time to spare to account for traffic and parking. I want to be overprepared. We want to make sure that we have looked at every detail. Fans who arrive before the doors to the Dome open at 6 can enjoy the free student-run McCartney Madness pre-show. Student a cappella group Orange Appeal is one of the groups that will be performing Beatles hits on the quad. We're really excited to be able to, to actually do a song like yesterday that's, that's already so popular and put our own spin on it um, and just kind of build up the hype for, for Sir McCartney, Sir Paul. Now, the actual concert inside the Dome has no opening act, so Sir, Sir Paul McCartney himself will begin just behind these walls at 8 p.m. Reporting live from the Dome, Gabrielle Caracciolo, Citrus TV News. Thanks, Gabriella. The SPCA rescued hundreds of animals from a home in Lockport early this morning. The SPCA checked the house as they were investigating the area. Some of the animals include 31 snakes, 30 quail, and over 200 rodents. All animals are being taken care of at the local shelter and will be put up for adoption soon. 
And those aren't the only animals receiving a helping hand. This seal is about to get a little more chipper, even though he has one less flipper. The Niagara Aquarium will welcome a recovered harbor seal tomorrow. The seal was hit by a boat and had to have his back flipper amputated. Rescuers found him on a Long Island beach earlier this year. His injuries have made it impossible to live in the wild, so he will join six other seals in his new home. A construction worker was knocked down more than 27 floors to his death this morning while working on a luxury apartment in Lower Manhattan. Juan Chujinho was working on the construction of the building when he was hit by a cable that knocked him over. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Work has stopped because of the unsafe operation of the crane and an undergoing investigation. And while some of the leaves may be changing, the weather is still feeling like summer. Is that heat going to stay around? Our weather anchor Jack Watson has the answer. Jack? Thanks a lot, guys. Well, today, according to the calendar, is the last day of summer. Sadly, tomorrow is the first day of fall. And you know what? You wouldn't be able to tell from today's weather. 81 degrees today. Uh, the summer weather continuing with some big changes late next week. We're going to feel those fall effects as early as next week. We'll talk about that a little later. But for now, our current temperatures in and around central New York. Uh, Syracuse, 77 degrees. Cortland, 75. Ithaca, 75 as well. Binghamton, 78 degrees. And Rochester out by Lake Ontario, 76 degrees. Now, tonight's forecast a low of 55 degrees with some light winds 5 to 10 miles an hour not too bad though uh, but we're preparing for another hot day uh, tomorrow at 81 degrees very similar today with some minor cloud coverage a mostly sunny day I have an exclusive interview coming up after the break guys and coming up find out what the government will have to spend thousands of dollars on and it's all because of one little penny and our weather anchor Jack Watson sits with a doctor of earth sciences to talk about this year's hurricane season. Stay with us. You've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Come on, it's not that hard. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. <laughs> Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure's gonna go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text Barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. Oof. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. President Trump is getting backlash after his speech at the United Nations. The commander-in-chief referenced the name of a non-existent African country while praising its health care system. Trump congratulated the fictional country of Nambia for successfully dodging Ebola outbreak two years ago. It is unknown whether he meant Gambia, Zambia, or Namibia. The president also applauded Africa for their impressive economic development. I'm greatly honored to host this lunch to be joined by the leaders of Cote d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, Ghana, Guinea, Nambia. In Guinea and Nigeria, you fought a horrifying Ebola outbreak. Nambia's health system is increasingly self-sufficient. 
and a little netting could go a long way for the Yankees. One little girl is in the hospital recovering after being hit by a 105 mile per hour ball at last night's Twins Yankees game. She was watching the game with her grandfather in the lower level seats when she was hit. Her father says she is OK for now, but surgery is still in question. Last month, the Yankees said they were considering extending the netting. After yesterday, player says it's time to make moves. Just how much can a penny truly cost? New details on the damage done to the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. A U.S. Park police officer watched a student use a penny to scratch the side of the famous memorial on Monday. Now the cost for that damage has been released. The government will have to spend $2,000 on a polish treatment to remove the scratches, but that can't fix it all. Natural weathering will hopefully take care of the rest. Police arrested and charged the student with destruction of property. And UN peacekeepers are under fire as new sexual abuse numbers have been released this morning. The Associated Press found that nearly half of the 2,000 reported cases came from the Congo. Victims were promised aid and help from the UN, but most received nothing. UN Security General Antonio Gutierrez called for states to take responsibility for their peacekeepers. North Korea responded to President Trump's speech the UN General at the UN General Assembly today. The president said on Tuesday that he would totally destroy North Korea if it threatened the U.S. or its allies. Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho said that Trump's words would not stop North Korea's weapon program. The minister compared the comments to a barking dog in his response. <laughs> If anyone thinks such remarks that is nothing more than a dog's barking can frighten us, it is really a wild dream. International pressure continues to mount on North Korea as the U.S. and its allies add more sanctions today. President Trump condemned individuals and groups who support North Korea financially. His executive order allows the Treasury Department to penalize banks that trade with North Korea. This is another part of Trump's plan to cut off sources of revenue that he says, quote, funds the development of the deadliest weapons known to humankind. Trump says military action is still on the table, but diplomacy is preferred. South Korea says it will spend millions of dollars to send fresh humanitarian aid to North Korea. The money will channel through UN programs to send improved medical supplies and help citizens like children and pregnant women. The support comes days after the U.N. approved new sanctions against North Korea in response to the country's latest nuclear test. This is the first time South Korea will send aid to the North in two years. And aid will also be needed across the Pacific in Mexico. Rescuers are still trying to find those missing from Tuesday's deadly earthquake. Today, their focus was on a collapsed elementary school near Mexico City. Rescuers ordered crowds to stay quiet so they could hear any voices or tapping coming from inside the collapsed school. Mexico's subsecretary of the Navy said today that all children have been accounted for. Authorities say 19 children died in the collapse. The city mayor says the 7.1 quake magnitude quake killed at least 250 people. There's no light at the end of the tunnel for Puerto Rico, at least not for a little while. Power officials say the entire nation is without power after Hurricane Maria devastated the island yesterday. Officials predict many people could be in the dark for months. Recovery efforts are slow after multiple hurricanes in the region have proven too costly for the debt-ridden territory. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Hurricane season has been unusually strong with Harvey and Irma doing damage to the mainland, United States and Maria taking its toll on the Caribbean. Jack Watson sits down with Syracuse Earth Sciences Professor Daniel Kurwitz to talk about the science behind the weather. Jack? Apologies for the technical difficulties. Google makes a billion dollar play to keep up with the iPhone. And Facebook allowed anti-Semitic advertising on their site. We'll, teach, we'll tell you, pardon, what changes the social media company is making to prevent this in the future. Stay tuned. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city.
Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Continues to grow its empire. The internet giant spent over $1 billion to buy former HTC employees late last night. The new engineering team already helped build the Pixel smartphone for Google. Google plans to use the new team to help create a family of devices that will compete against Apple and Amazon. And the SEC chairman announced last night that hackers may have access to the government's electronic system. Regulators discovered the hacking last month, but the invasion occurred last year. The SEC says the hackers may have illegally traded the information for money, but they do not believe that the cyber attack compromised personal information. Australia is on edge as a flesh-eating disease continues to spread. Health authorities are saying the epidemic is growing stronger in the small region of Victoria. Scientists say the case of this deadly disease seems to be doubling each year. Doctors are trying to quickly diagnose the disease for fast recovery because it can cause lasting damage it left on, if left untreated. And Facebook is changing the way their ads work after they discovered advertisers have been targeting anti-Semitic people on their site. Facebook will add more oversight to their algorithms, including human editors. Last weekend, a report showed that Facebook allowed advertisers to target hate speech to find customers. This is another of Facebook's many advertising problems that the company is trying to fix. Coming up in sports, Syracuse Volleyball finally returned to the women's building, SU Men's Lacrosse is getting a little more coverage, and a stunning revelation regarding a former New England Patriot. All that and more on the other side of the break. Stick around. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. 
Welcome to your Citrus TV Sports Update. I'm Adam Unger. The Syracuse volleyball team has been on the road for nearly a month, and they already have more wins than they had throughout all of last season. Last night, SU hosted Boston College for their ACC opener. Let's take a look at how it went down. And as you can see, Kendra Lukacs, she had 18 kills on the night, but she was not the story. Early on in the first set, Anastasia Gorelina, huge block there along with Santita Ibangwase, and Syracuse would take the first set 25-23. BC would fight back, though, as Kat Belito has the kill here right off of Libero Bell Sand, and that would make it even one-to-one. Let's go ahead to the third set now. Huge comeback led by Lukacs. She had five kills of the seven points Syracuse needed to take that one 25-23. And at the end of the match, it was all Gorelina. She had a career high, 20 kills. And let's show you one more to boot here. Syracuse would take this one, three sets to one. And here's what she had to say about her performance in the win. Like, I start play with my heart. Like, uh, like hit and jump high, like, like, I don't know what exactly what changed with in, in, uh, in inside, but it's something like, up, and I need to like be more aggressive, fight for my team. You have everything in the world. You have size, athletic ability. You know, just give every time, give your whole heart. You have to come with the attitude to win. You have to believe you can win. Every ball you're getting, you have to go like it's a last ball. The game on the line. And this is all developing, you know, it's not easy to do. It takes so much from you, and not as much as physical. As... Syracuse men's lacrosse is going to be in an even bigger spotlight than in years past. The Orange's 2018 campaign will be documented by The Season. Coverage starts with SU's fall ball practices in the coming weeks and will run until the Final Four, which takes place over Memorial Day weekend. The digital series can be streamed at theseason2018.com. STX and Inside Lacrosse will also feature ACC schools Duke and UNC, along with last year's semifinalist Ohio State. Elsewhere on the Hill, the women's soccer team kicks off conference play tonight. Their original ACC opener against Miami was postponed due to Hurricane Irma. So the Orange has had nearly two weeks of rest heading into a matchup with number 18, Wake Forest. The Orange currently boasts a 5-2-1 record, and they have a loss and a tie against ranked opponents so far this season. Sophomore forward Sydney Brackett leads the Orange with four goals on the year, and between the pipes, star senior Courtney Brosnan is expected to start. First touch is at 7 p.m., and Citrus TV's Luke McGrath has you covered with a full post-game update. Did someone say tennis? The Syracuse tennis team kicked off their fall schedule today at the Milwaukee Tennis Classic. The Orange is represented by nationally ranked sophomore Miranda Ramirez. Preliminary matches have gone on all day and will continue tomorrow. The finals take place at Panther Arena on the campus of UW-Milwaukee on Sunday. The rest of the tennis team is competing at the West Point Invitational here in New York State. In more serious news, recent studies have found that the brain of former NFL player Aaron Hernandez has stage 3 CTE. The result of his autopsy was made public by his lawyer and the autopsy itself was requested by his family. Hernandez took his own life in prison this past April after three years in the NFL and three years of a life sentence without parole for murder. And on the gridiron tonight, the LA Rams are paying a visit to the San Francisco 49ers at 8.25 p.m. The spread favors the Rams by three points. Should be a battle of the backs in the San Francisco Bay. Both Carlos Hyde and Todd Gurley are in the top 10 in rushing yards this season. Rams quarterback Jared Goff has improved pressed this season, excuse me, he has thrown for over 500 yards and two touchdowns with just one interception through two games. Niners quarterback Brian Hoyer, on the other hand, hasn't won an NFL game since October of 2016. All right, so what do you think then? Rams, 49ers, who's going to take it tonight? I've got to go with the LA Rams. The San Francisco 49ers have been a mess throughout Chip Kelly's tenure, and the Rams look really good. They've gotten a lot better on offense. They have a lot more weapons around Jared Goff. I already mentioned Todd Gurley. They have better wide receivers, too. So I'm looking for the Rams to take this one pretty easily, probably by a couple possessions. And it's been a rough start to the season for them, but while you're here, I've got to ask, how can my New York Giants do this weekend? I don't see them doing that great against the Eagles, Connor. I hate to tell you, but the offensive line can't give Eli Manning enough time to get it to his wide receivers. I think Odell Beckham and Brandon Marshall are one of the most dangerous wide receiver duos in the NFL. But if Eli Manning doesn't have time and the Eagles have a great pass rush and a great young offense, I don't see them getting it done. All right, well, I, dis I respectfully disagree. We'll see. Coming up, there's a greater chance you will get to see sea turtles now. Stick around. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. 
The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I had something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. So, Jack, Sir Paul McCartney is coming to the Dome this weekend. How is the local weather going to treat him? Well, uh, pretty summer-like, I would say, to say the least. 82 degrees, uh, the forecast for Paul McCartney's concert on Saturday. Uh, humidity at 61%. I would recommend dressing lightly because the Dome really does heat up. And we were talking about that earlier. Uh, our Friday planner here. Uh, 9 a.m. 62 degrees, noon 74, and 6 p.m. 75 degrees for tomorrow, guys. All right, now we're going to Jack Watson with the onset. In the studio right now is Professor Daniel Kurowitz with the Earth Sciences Department. Dan, thanks for being with us today. Now, the continental United States has dealt with uh, Harvey, Irma, uh, Jose out in the Atlantic, and now uh, Maria is doing significant damage to the Caribbean. Uh, what scientifically can be attributed to this? Uh, well. The temperature of the oceans, the temperature of the atmosphere, the way the wind is blowing off the continent of Africa, uh, the interaction between the winds off of Africa and the low pressure over the ocean, and the guiding winds that drive those storms westward towards the Caribbean and towards the United States. The number of storms that happen in any particular year, you don't really know if there is a specific, detailed, scientific, step-by-step -step way to predict that. But the power of those storms year by year has been increasing as long as we've been measuring them in very high-tech ways. Um, this year's aggressive hurricane season is unprecedented. It's continuing to drop more rain, the winds are blowing harder, the storms are larger in area. Now the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico is currently being hit by Maria as we speak. Really hard. Very hard, absolutely. Uh, now can this region sustain these hurricanes for much longer? What's the outlook for these regions? Uh, okay, so the, the Caribbean has been getting hit by hurricanes for as long as there have been hurricanes. It's right in the path of the storms that sweep westward from the African coast towards the North American coast. Um, the issue is the infrastructure. The issue is the stuff that we build. The issue is the delicacy or intricacy of the systems that support the people there. And that's all we have for you guys tonight. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, CitrusCD.com. I'm Claudia Valvado. And I'm Connor White. Have a great evening, Syracuse.